I want you to imagine that your cells have become so used to using one kind of fuel that they actually forget how to use another kind. Now, when we're trying to combat things like insulin resistance and we're trying to increase insulin sensitivity and we're trying to improve overall metabolic health as we get older, being able to use multiple fuels is so important. And one of the problems that people tend to face when they're doing like a ketogenic or a lower carb protocol is yes, they're not consuming glucose, so their cells sort of forget how to use the glucose in some ways. It's called peripheral insulin resistance. But you can also have a negative impact by consuming so much fat that the pancreas is less efficient at producing insulin via pancreatic beta cells. And it all has to do with the energy density of fats that we consume. So let's dive in. So there's a study that was published in Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism. Interesting stuff because it looked at uh, post-mortem, it looked at people that had already passed away, and it ultimately had demonstrated that these people that had diabetes already had a significant amount of pancreatic beta cell death. Now, the pancreas is what produces insulin. Inside the pancreas, what produces the insulin are called pancreatic beta cells, and they're very sensitive cells that respond to fuel. When they see fuel, they produce insulin, right? Well, it's more complicated than that, but that's a very simple colloquial way of putting it. By the time people are diagnosed with diabetes, it is estimated that they've already had up to 50% pancreatic beta cell apoptosis, meaning their pancreatic beta cells have already gone through a lot of death by the time people ever even realize they're actually diabetic. This is pretty sketchy, right? And it really illuminates a lot of things. So if you're doing a lower carb diet, or even if you're not, if you're having a bunch of fats coming in, all these fats all the time, and I'm not saying the fats are bad at all, okay? But high abundances of fat will eventually spoil the pancreatic beta cells because the pancreatic beta cells actually require the energy from either glucose or fat to ultimately stimulate enough ATP generation to secrete insulin. It's like this weird electrical response where when there's uh, electrons to ultimately fuel the pancreatic beta cell, it builds up with ATP and it ultimately secretes insulin. Well, remember that fats have nine calories per gram, carbs have four. You have a lot more energy density in fat. So when we are consistently eating lots of fats and potentially overeating, which happens a lot, right? Well, think about what happens. You are bombarding this pancreatic beta cell with so much fuel that it has a buildup of ATP and it becomes somewhat numb to the fact that when glucose comes in, it doesn't even really respond to it. And I've used this analogy before. Imagine that you're, you, know, you ate a giant dinner with some friends, and then as soon as you leave, some other friends call up and say, hey, do you wanna go eat dinner with us? You're like, I'm already satiated. That's kind of the same way, right? It's a, the pancreatic beta cells don't respond to the glucose because they've had so much ATP buildup from the saturated fats or just fats in general. Now, this doesn't really happen in the short term. It happens chronically over time. So basically, the pancreatic beta cells have no need for glucose. So you end up having hyperinsulinemia because fats are driving up insulin because there's no need to respond to glucose. So my point in saying this is, it's very important to cycle in and out of carbohydrates. Why? Because if you periodically reduce your fat content and increase your carbohydrates, you can really course correct a lot of this. And you can start allowing the pancreatic beta cells to develop an affinity for glucose again. When it comes to cycling carbs, I did put a link down below. Thrive Market is an online grocery store. They are really, really cool because when it comes to cycling carbs, I feel like they have some really cool options. So you go on their website and you can sort by diet category. So you can sort by like keto. And then when you're cycling off of keto, you can sort by say gluten-free or low carb or things that are gonna be sugar-free. So you don't have to bombard yourself with a bunch of cruddy carbs. You can kind of cycle in and out strategically. That's where I found Thrive Market to be one of the most like useful situations for that. So that link down below will save 30% off your entire first grocery order. You never have to go to a grocery store. Do it all from your computer or their app is really, really easy. So you can just find what you want, sort by diet type, and bam, it's to your doorstep in a couple of days. But the best part is that link is a 30% off discount link. So check them out after this video and you'll also get a $50 free gift for using my special link down below. Now the other piece that we've talked about 
is the glucose tolerance piece. Okay, if you don't use it, you lose it. Now I've kind of beat that one into the ground a little bit, but it's a double whammy because I want you to consider something. There's two different directions in which we look at insulin resistance. So there is the beta cell responsiveness and how the pancreatic beta cells release insulin. And then there's the catcher's mitt. Then there's the insulin receptor side of things, okay, that actually triggers a cell to become sensitive to the glucose or to insulin, right? So two sides, producing insulin, receiving insulin. Saturated fats to a high degree, any fats really, but especially saturated fats, can really cause this pancreatic beta cell dysfunction, if you wanna call it that. But the lack of occasionally having carbohydrates can actually impact how the cell receives glucose. If the cell is not seeing a signal from glucose all that often, it downregulates its machinery that it uses to deal with glucose. So it sort of loses its glucose metabolizing capabilities because it has gotten so good at using fats. That is a great thing. It's gotten good at using fats, but if it's losing its glucose abilities, then when you do have carbohydrates in the mix, you have a somewhat insulin resistant cell. So you have two situations that could be detrimental. The lipid toxicity, if you want to call it that, affecting the production of insulin and a potentially insulin resistant cell. So then you have a double whammy. So you ever notice if you've been doing low carb, your glucose starts climbing and climbing and climbing. This isn't just something to look the other way at. It might mean, okay, it's time to back off. It's time to cycle in the carbohydrates. That kind of carbohydrates is up to you, but it's time to cycle them back in. And usually I say for like three, four, five weeks, but one of the things that you can do is start monitoring your glucose. If you're measuring your glucose and you see these numbers coming down a little bit after you implement carbs, they might spike at first because remember, you might have a degree of peripheral temporary insulin resistance. One of the other things that I highly recommend, and this is sort of forward thinking if you want to call it that, is there's a study in Diabetologia that I've referenced in other studies. If you reduce calories rather aggressively, you can reverse beta cell responsiveness issues. So that is something that you can implement. When you do add the carbohydrates back in, maybe that's the time in which you also reduce calories. See what I'm saying? So you're adding carbs in, but you're also putting yourself in a deficit at the same time. So that way you're doing three things, okay? You are allowing the cell to become more efficient at using carbs, you're also allowing the pancreatic beta cells to start developing the need for glucose once again, so that they actually respond to the glucose. And you're also reversing the effects by being in a caloric deficit. So you're reversing the negative effects that you were exposed to by having high fats for so long without carbohydrates. So that's kind of the trick. When I cycle off of keto or when I cycle back into carbohydrates, a lot of times I'm in a caloric deficit during that period of time. And that's the mistake that people make with carb cycling is they don't go into a deficit or the carbs open up that kind of addictive can of worms where you just go overboard and next thing you know, you're eating too much. The issues that we face by and large as a society are not solely a carbohydrate problem. They're not solely a fat problem. They are an overconsumption problem. And the overconsumption of fats is just as bad, if not even worse than the overconsumption of carbohydrates. Overconsumption in general is a problem. The reason I like a lower carb approach is because it makes overconsumption a little bit more difficult if you're producing satiating ketones but that requires diligence and discipline. In my opinion, it works great to go two months on, one month off, but monitoring your glucose is going to be the easiest way to understand and determine this. I will see you tomorrow.